Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Number 8. The Ice Core In the early part of the 1960s, the United States Army was busy trying to create a nuclear base in the frozen tundra of Greenland. The experiment was a total disaster. It was called Project Ice Worm. Scientists dug a series of tunnels beneath Greenland's ice sheet. The point of the tunnels was to house a military base that could be used to launch nuclear missiles in the case of a Third World War. In reality, it was a terrible idea. It's almost impossible to build nuclear bases in the ice. Still, the U.S. Army tried. They hollowed out about a mile of tunnels, though they had plans for hundreds of miles of tunnels. They successfully built kitchens, dormitories, and a chapel. They even constructed a power station to bring electricity into the freezing tunnels below the ice. Sounds like something out of the Mission Impossible movie, where a supervillain creates a diabolical lair. But this was real life. In 1966, researchers stationed at Camp Century in Greenland drilled through over 3,000 feet of ice to collect a core sample. These samples are very important because they held within them the history of Greenland's ice buildup. The military was concerned because their operation was already being threatened by warming ice. Scientists were realizing their base could never work because the ice was melting too quickly. It was already too unstable for them to continue with their secret nuclear facility. The project was abandoned and Camp Century was left to rot. The sediment core was transferred to a military freezer in the 1970s. Then it was shipped to the University of Buffalo and later to Copenhagen. In 2018, researchers at the University of Copenhagen rediscovered the ice core samples stored in cookie jars. Scientists used a modern technique called luminescence dating to investigate the samples. They found that the sediment beneath the ice was last exposed to sunlight 416,000 years ago. This was a big deal because it proved exactly how old the ice in Greenland is. The ice also showed that Greenland was covered in a variety of plants before the freeze. The difference in temperature between when Greenland was a lush forest and the frozen tundra is only 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial records. We are currently at about 1.1 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial records. That means that humanity is on a trajectory to an ice-free Greenland in the near future. It's an apocalyptic situation. Number 7. Floki and the Land of Ice For anyone who's seen the wildly popular TV show Vikings, you'll know who the character Floki is. In the TV show, he's a wacky shipbuilder who helps the Vikings travel to new worlds. In reality, Floki wasn't so different. His character in the TV show is based on a real Norse explorer named Hrafna Floki Vilger Darsen. It's believed he was the first Viking to settle in the Land of Ice, aka Iceland. In Scandinavia during the Middle Ages, civilization was becoming modern. There were taxes and centralized rules, which helped push brave explorers to flee and find new lands that were less stressful. One of the first places discovered by the Vikings was the British Isles. They reached the shores of Britain in 793 AD, eventually settling there and mixing with the local population. They landed on the Faroe Islands, which became a base at the edge of the known world. 260 miles to the west, Iceland was waiting to be found. It was discovered accidentally by a Viking named Nadod of Norway. He set sail for the Faroe Islands but got lost and reached the shores of a different land, one totally covered in ice with no sign of human life. There wasn't anyone living on Iceland, making it the perfect place for a Viking settlement. Once word spread of the mysterious land in the west, Floki became the first person to intentionally sail there with his family as a settler. He went with his wife Gro, their two children, and a small group of pilgrims. The journey was hard, one of Floki's daughters died along the way, but he eventually made it to a large bay. That bay is currently home to Reykjavik, Iceland's modern capital. Floki didn't stay in Iceland. He and his family spent the summer there and ate very well thanks to the abundance of fish. But the winter was an absolute nightmare. The whole island covered itself in snow and ice. It was a miserable place. So when spring came, Floki sailed with his family back to Norway. A permanent settlement wasn't created in the land of ice until 874 by chieftain Ingolfur Arnarsson. And now for number six, but first, it's shout out time! I want to give a huge thank you to Tazilla Simon for the generous super thanks! Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already to join the Origins Explained family! We'd love to have you!
Number 6. The Giant Camel The Canadian Arctic is home to polar bears, arctic foxes, and burrowing squirrels. It's a cold and inhospitable wasteland where very few creatures live. But three and a half million years ago, it was home to giant camels. Camels thrived in the Canadian Arctic during a spell of global warming. Some of their bones were recently discovered by researcher Natalia Rybzinski in the High Arctic. On a windswept ridge, the paleobiologist from the Canadian Museum of Nature recovered a handful of bone fragments. The bone fragments turned out to belong to the first camel ever discovered in this part of the world. This was on Ellesmere Island, an extraordinarily isolated place that doesn't see a lot of action from scientists. What's really exciting is that researchers think the giant camel from the Canadian Arctic was the predecessor of the camels that currently live in the sands of Africa and the Middle East. With just a few pieces of bone, researchers were able to determine that the giant camel was a northern forest specialist. Its humps weren't for storing water, but for storing fat. Rather than needing to survive in harsh deserts with little to drink, the Canadian camels needed fat to survive the cold Arctic winters with no food. Although it was a period of warm weather, the Arctic still had cold winters. Number 5. Glacier Girl Glacier Girl sounds like a frozen cavewoman discovered in a block of ice, but that's not the case at all. Glacier Girl is a World War II fighter plane that was found buried beneath the ice in Greenland. The fighter plane is a Lockheed P-38F Lightning. It was lost in July of 1942 due to a blizzard that caused limited visibility. Six of these fantastic war machines were trying to make it from Greenland to the British Isles. They were part of the 94th Fighter Squadron, joined by a pair of B-17 bombers. The planes were part of Operation Bolero, which was the secret mission commissioned by the United States military to bring troops into the United Kingdom. It was in preparation to cross the English Channel and take the fight to Germany's doorstep. Unfortunately, the fighter planes couldn't find their way to Britain. They were forced to make emergency landings on a random ice field in one of the coldest places in the world. The crew was rescued along with some of the planes, but Glacier Girl and five other fighters were buried beneath the snow. They were buried with the two B-17 bombers under an estimated 268 feet of snow and ice. Because there was no way to get them right away, they sat on the glacier as snow fell year after year. 50 years after the plane was lost, it was brought to the surface. In 1992, members of the Greenland Expedition Society discovered the location of the lost plane and dug it out of the ice. It was transported to Kentucky, where it was restored to its original flying condition. Number 4. Frozen Mongolian Mummies Scientists recently analyzed the mummified remains of Mongolian warriors and officials from the days of the Mongol Empire. These high-ranking individuals were buried in graves 800 years ago, then preserved in the permafrost ever since. Scientists found luxury items buried with them, things like gold artifacts and silk cloth. After analyzing their teeth, researchers found that these people had an affinity for yak milk. The cemetery was discovered in the Kovzgol Mountains of northern Mongolia. The burials date to approximately 1206 AD, with all of the bodies in nearly perfect condition. Experts already spent years trying to remove the leather and silk found frozen to the tops of the burials. But now, thanks to global warming, a great thaw in the mountains has made it a lot easier to get into the graves. Fearing looters would come in search of ancient treasure, archaeologists excavated as quickly as humanly possible. They wanted to salvage as much material and as many mummies as they could before tomb raiders showed up. The excavations revealed that the cemetery was specifically for members of the Mongolian aristocracy. They don't have names or duties, we don't know exactly who was buried here. They only know they were aristocrats because of the valuable grave items. For example, a beautiful silk robe depicting a golden dragon, something that could have only been worn by one of the most important people in the empire. It was likely worn by a woman, maybe an important legislator or noble lady at the Mongolian city of Karakorum. According to researcher Ventresca Miller, the golden dragon was the sign of the imperial family. Researchers also discovered a gold Buddha figurine, proving Buddhism was practiced among the elite Mongolians. Buddhism spread as far as the border of Russia in the 13th century. Number 3. Seashell Arrowheads Archaeologists were shocked when they discovered a collection of very unusual arrowheads in the Norwegian mountains. The arrowheads date back 3,500 years. 
Because of rising temperatures in Europe, they were found in puddles of melted ice. What makes the arrowheads so special is that they weren't crafted from steel, bone, flint, or stone. They were made from freshwater pearl mussels. Archaeologist Lars Pilo said he doesn't know why they chose to make arrowheads from shells. Ancient people in the region had easy access to stone, bone, and antlers. That was what people normally made arrowheads out of. Seashell arrowheads haven't been found anywhere else in the world, making them some of the most unique artifacts on the planet. Lars is the leader of Secrets of the Ice, an archaeological program that has been scouring the warming mountains of Norway in search of treasure. They've been hard at work since 2011. Researchers have already found a lot of really exciting things in the melting ice, but nothing more unique than the deadly pearl mussels. Archaeologists don't know if they were used for hunting or warfare. They appear to have been manufactured for a few hundred years, then they fell out of favor. The curious arrowheads may have been ceremonial in nature, but another weird thing is that they were found in the mountains, not exactly the greatest location for finding mussels. Number 2. The Shocking Ruins of Delta Terra Cern there are not very many icy ruins to be explored on this planet. Most ruins of castles and cities are found in warm places, not in the frozen tundra. But there is one in northern Greenland, located on the Piri Land Peninsula. It's called Delta Terra Cern, built by a pre-Inuit society 4,000 years ago. It's considered one of the largest archaeological sites in Greenland. It was found in 1948 by Danish archaeologist Eagle Knuth as part of an expedition to explore Greenland's farthest corners. The amazing ruins of the pre-Inuit stronghold were occupied starting in 2050 BC. By 1750 BC, the fortress was abandoned. Very little of Delta Terra Cern remains standing today, but the few ruins have given archaeologists a good idea of what it looked like when it was initially built. The ancient culture constructed the place using huge stones to create terraces. It was kind of like how Machu Picchu was built in terraced levels moving down the mountainside. Here, they started at 75 feet above sea level and built platforms at lower elevations to about 16 feet above sea level. Researchers have discovered the rings of old tent structures and meat caches. There were dwellings, paved floors, and open-air hearths. Experts have noted how Delta Terra Cern's ruins look very similar to ruins discovered in Eurasia. I'm talking about forgotten settlements built by ancient nomadic civilizations like the Scythians. Even with all the evidence on the ground, archaeologists know almost nothing about what happened to the people here. The mystery culture abandoned their city for an unknown reason, never to return. But for about 300 years before that, Delta Terra Cern was a magnificent place. It would have been one of the most spectacular northern settlements on the planet, likely covered in ice and snow for most of the year. Number 1. The Ice Wall The first people who wanted to enter the New World may have been hindered by a serious obstacle. New research has shown that early humans were prevented from traveling from Asia to the Americas by a giant ice wall. A solid barrier of ice estimated at 300 stories tall. That's taller than any current building on Earth. Imagine a wall the height of the Burj Khalifa only taller and made of solid ice. Then imagine that wall stretching as far as the eye can see into the white mists of endless blizzards. This was what the first people trying to enter America came across when they wandered over the Bering Land Bridge. The new discovery could change history as it's taught at schools, because as you might know already, there are two main theories as to how humans migrated into North America. The most prevalent theory for years has been that they crossed a land bridge that once connected Asia and North America. The other theory, which is much newer, is that people used boats. They paddled to North America and traveled down the coastline all the way to South America. The presence of an ice wall could mean the paddling theory is the correct one. History is changing all the time. Scientists thought the Clovis culture was the first one to migrate into the Americas 13,400 years ago. This was based on stone tools discovered with that dating. But in 2021, human footprints were found in New Mexico from 23,000 years ago. Clearly, there was a different civilization in the American Southwest much earlier. The ice wall likely stood as an impenetrable barricade until about 14,000 years ago. Geologist Jory Clark from Oregon State University said the wall likely stood 3,000 feet high. There would have been no way to get around it. 
If people were already in America, it means they must have come by boat. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and come back soon. See you next time. Bye.